Hi, welcome back to another episode of Sankofa Pan-African series. In this episode, I'll be looking at the decline of ancient Egypt's old kingdom and the rise of Nubia and Kush. Now, things became compounded in Egypt around 3184 BC when King Amenemet IV died without leaving a successor. The tradition at the time was that power was inherited through the daughter of the pharaoh. However, the daughter of the pharaoh was not allowed to use her inherited power to rule. Rather, she was expected to transmit her royal prerogative to her husband, who then became the pharaoh. As such, the tradition was that a serving pharaoh would be succeeded by his son-in-law. This tradition forced pharaohs to be creative um, about how they protected their lineage. For instance, generations of pharaohs protected their lineage by having their oldest daughters marry their oldest sons, so that the king's sons were also their sons-in-law and could therefore succeed them. The beginning of the decline of ancient Egypt can be traced to one of such marriages. Amenemet IV followed this tradition by marrying his sister named Sobeneferu. But unfortunately, he died before he could have any children. Sobeneferu was then expected to marry another man from her noble Theban family. But she went against traditions by marrying a commoner from Lower Egypt. Now, let me quickly pause by stopping to claim this woman as the first recorded African feminist. The way I imagine it is that Sobeneferu probably came to the conclusion after her brother husband's death that she wanted a shot at using the power which was bestowed on her by birth. So... She chose to rule rather than hand over power to another noble member of her Theban family. She did what, to my mind, any smart woman would do. She married a commoner and reigned as pharaoh. Uh, according to Kim Ryholt, Sobeneferu was the last ruler of the 12th dynasty of Egypt, and she ruled for about four years, uh, from about 1806 to 1802 BC. Unfortunately, she died without leaving any children, and is the first recorded female pharaoh. It is possible that the commoner that she married, or members of his uh, uh, family who were from Lower Egypt, tried to take over the throne after her death. Egypt was then plunged into a civil war because the Theban nobility refused to be ruled by a commoner from Lower Egypt. This war became protracted, lasting about a hundred years, during which Egypt was divided into two dynasties. One was run by Theban nobility in Thebes, the other run by monarchs from Lower Egypt in Memphis. This, of course, left Egypt vulnerable enough to be attacked by other groups such as the Hyksos, who were nomads from Asia. The Hyksos first conquered Lower Egypt and then moved in on Thebes. They then held the whole of Egypt captive for about 150 years. The reign of the Hyksos forced members of the Theban nobility to move southwards into Nubia in order to organize an underground liberation movement, which worked to progressively chip away the authority of the Hyksos. First, they managed to retake Thebes, from which they then ousted the Hyksos, thereby beginning what is known as the New Kingdom. The pharaohs of this new kingdom then developed Egypt into its greatest period. 
Egypt became the major power in the world around that time. It engaged in trade with all the major commercial centers which had then um, started to develop. It imported timber from Syria and built large vessels with which sailors could travel to East Africa. Egypt engaged in trade with Pont, which laid southeast of Egypt, from where Egypt in, in imported ivory, um, ebony, spices, and gold. Thebes became expanded with magnificent mansions built by the nobility. According to C. V. Vilne, some of these mansions had as many as 50 to 60 rooms. They had walls and halls covered in exquisite artworks and were decorated with expensive furniture and sculptures. Finally, according to one account, in 761 BC, Egypt was conquered by an Ethiopian king named Pianki. Between this period, which marks the beginning of Pianki's reign, and 525 BC, Egypt was ruled by various pharaohs and suffered attacks by different groups, including Assyrians. It continued to face attacks from Persia and remained under Persia, uh, under Persian control until 332 BC, when Alexander the Macedonian, also known as Alexander the Great, a Greek, conquered it and left the Ptolemies to rule till 30 BC, when Egypt came fully under the Roman Empire. It was the Greeks who built the famous city of Alexandria as a tribute to Alexander the Macedonian. Some of the enduring innovations which ancient Egypt bestowed the world are writing, paper, ink, pen, the calendar with the lunar year, which was made up of 354 days, which is just 11 days shorter than the solar year. Egypt also left us the foundations of the zodiac system and several other innovations, too numerous to mention here. Please, once again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have not yet done so like it and feel free to share with your friends see you next time